makes happy clicking noises in neutral light 1, eh? I'm about to make some happy clicking noises as well of my own. Cut the music. I'm not happy about this at all. I, I said yesterday, hey, let's thank Alexian for making such a nice neutral I'm going to name the neutral after the person who writes the best thank you letter. And I even, in my infinite wisdom, let Alexian pick his favorite. And what happens? Turns out that person used chat GPT. Now the freaking neutral is called chat GPT. I'm not angry, okay? I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed you've only let yourself down because the point of writing the thank you letter wasn't about the words used, but about the sentiment. You've let the whole team down. So you know what? Next time we get a neutral lobe, I'm going to pick the thank you letter I like the most. I don't care that they weren't addressed to me. <laughs> you know what? No, I've changed my mind. You don't just get to get away with this. You thought that Velociraptor was bad yesterday. We're going for a second round of friendly fire. Oh, but it is very full of milk. All right, fine. I'll let you off. I'll let you off. I'm not happy about it. Hey, Frog and Fluffy Pops have started a social fight from other side of Main Street. Oh, maybe they've got some history. Will shit in my britches and call me grandpa. It's more RimWorld. Now, yesterday, I was supposed to reform the ideology and got distracted by building an enormous, hideous church. Now, unfortunately, the, the, the same episode that we got the abilities to reform was the same episode with the whole lasso incident. So the comment section was full of totally the wrong things. But I think there were some pretty convincing arguments for the meme. Now, there were two big ones that stood out beyond everything else. First one, very obviously, Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter makes a lot of sense for cowboys, right? Pistols at dawn in the middle of Main Street would go so well with this. I like that a lot. Combat prowess distance, of course, is, is perfect. Shooting specialists we've already got. That's the uh, that's the bounty hunter role. So we'd gain a little bit of benefit in combat, but that hasn't really been a big deal. The other pretty convincing argument I saw was for Scrapper. Scrapper's description is nothing should ever be wasted, not even bloodied or torn clothes. Discarded remains of old civilizations should be kept as treasures. And tell me we're not doing exactly that with the revolvers. And I mean, you know, taking someone's boots seems pretty on brand too. I'm not sure which one I prefer. To be honest, we're struggling more with resources, given that everything's but our wood running out of wood and we haven't got any components to build stoves with and stuff like that. Maybe Scrapper is a better call than Sharpshooter, because combat hasn't been a big deal. So I think I'm going to roll with it. I think I'm happy with that. Um, are you going to ruin my my predefined lovely... No, I, d I don't like this at all. Luckily for Granny Emmy, I am a master hacker, so I was able to get everything going without having to sacrifice any of my fine town rolls. Another great suggestion that I had to do, of course, was make Rottweilers venerated. Especially after sweet little Tatiana gave her life. I mean, uh, we've already basically got her venerated, right? Given that she's in a very fancy grave that I definitely haven't lost. Now, Tatiana, there wouldn't be a town because we'd have been ripped apart ages ago. Mad hyenas. But it's a psychic wave, so I'm going to worry about Scaria. What I am worried about is where's the baby? I was just impaled on a cavalry spike, as babies tend to be. <laughs> um, the hyenas are right there. Frog. Frog, I'm gonna need you to get up and move that damn baby. Come on, come on, come on. Frog, 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 okay, someone needs to come cover. Frog, done, Marjo. Frog, my man, what the hell are you doing? But pick the baby up! Carry the baby. Car carry the baby. Thank you. Okay, um, well, that's very annoying. He thought that the best way to go was up through here. What a fanny. Okay, we're gonna have to give him the old razzle dazzle. Go across the river. Shit! Stop, stop running and gunning, or carry on running and gunning. I'm not sure, because he seems to be doing all right. I think we stop, and you just, just leg it. Ah! Hobo. I can't draft him up. I can't draft him up. Melee attacking frog. Oh, they're not going for the baby. They're not going for the baby. I guess because it was on the water. It was too inconvenient. Oh, God. Marjo's now in melee range. Let's get you back in a little bit. Uh, Big Sawaru, come down here. Your child is being attacked by a pack of hyena. Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. We've got to sort this out. This town is totally undefendable. This needs to be fixed today. I've ended up with a colony of about 16 people who can't use friggin' revolvers. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just Big Sawaru, Emmy, and then a toddler, which is more reasonable. Unleash the Velociraptor. Yes. Okay, good work. Fluffy Pops, get over here. Okay, between them. Hold on. Punch that one. Nice. This is good. These Velociraptor turns out they work quite well, eh? Oh, damn. I should have had way more faith in that. Uh, Marjo, Marjo, Marjo. Four hours. Frog in five. What a great start. Really just knocked it out of the park, eh? Where's that stupid child gone? Why is it in the desert? Uh, can I restrict it to an area? I didn't think that would work, but you know what? I'll give it a go. Oh, you can just restrict it to an area. Oh, well then... <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't even bother to try it because it made such a big deal about the baby being able to escape now. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm just going to have to keep an eye on it, right? That's part of the difficulty. No, you can just lock it in a building. Dunn's got the Velociraptors covered. How are you looking? Bleeding out in six hours. Uh, that one's good. Thank you, Emmy. Well done. Good work. Everybody's going to be fine. We didn't lose any limbs, I presume, during that. I think I would have noticed. Uh, you lost a toe. That's fine. Honestly, if we lost a toe and all of that, I'm all right with it. Today, I'm arming the people of the frontier because this is ridiculous. All our weapons are shit. They're either awful or poor quality. And even then, they're just not very good. Flintlocks to fight bandits isn't ideal. I think I've got to build that blacksmith building. Then we're going to have to get out there. I'm going to have to trade for some resources to actually build guns out of because this is just not going to work like this. Right now, I think this building is actually going to have to be a little larger than your standard standard building, eh? Because we're going to need storage, we're going to need a crafting room, and we're going to need the shop front to sell it all, and we're going to need a house for the person running it. So this is going to be quite sizable. I could have the house next door? Uh, maybe that would work, actually. We have the crafting building, and then the house and the shop adjacent to it. And he can run both. Although his social skill is shit, he can tell them about his lovely creations. And we're going to throw down a baby zone. <laughs> <laughs> no more of this shit, you stupid, annoying creature. Babies can go in saloons. I think that's totally fine. Ooh, now there were some good suggestions with the uh, whole locks thing that I started setting up. So somebody said, why not allow the doctor, in this case, of course, Marjo, to go through all of the buildings, give her access to everything in case somebody, I don't know, falls over or collapses and needs urgent medical attention, has a heart attack, whatever might happen. Oh, that's kind of cool. You can filter it down even further to allow animals in, to allow people only with certain apparel. Cowboy hats only in the bar. We could genuinely do that. Oh, that's such a cool idea. I'm not going to do it because obviously it would alienate all of the guests to the city, but that'd be so fun. We can make a cowboy only club for people with cowboy hats and lassoes. Are you j give me a break. Man hunting Persian cats. Not again. It's every day with you people. Okay. Uh, look, even, even crap guns are better than no guns, right? They are really, really crap guns. Do not get me wrong. It actually might be better to fist fight them. Problem is, then we're gambling on Scaria. Roddy, where, where, where is everybody right now? Galbus, a guest of the Fallen Empire. Oh, God, my friend, you need to run. You know about all the wild cats roam in this region. Oh, they're so bad. <laughs> it would be better to punch people, actually. You get much more damage, but again, it's the risk, right? Bot action rifle, col- Ah, uh, no, no, no. We don't- We're not using the rifles. It's a revolver-only town. Or in this case, a- Flintlock only town. Here they come, they're coming down the alley. I knew these alleys were a bad idea. Get back up here. Where, where, where do we hide? Where do we go right now? Marjo's so slow, she's going to get bitten by Scaria. Ooh, good shooting. Good shooting. Nice, good shot. Frog, 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 frog. Oh my god, please, someone hit that fucking cat. Thank you. Oh god, the guest. That would cause a diplomatic incident if they ended up with Scaria, eh? We got one more. This is not exactly the showdown on Main Street I anticipated. It's always lovely, fluffy cats every time. <laughs> okay, okay, I think we're safe. I think we're safe. That was too dangerous. The plus side, I think we've got spare medicine at this point. Guests keep giving us medicine whenever they stop in the hotel or visit. We've got 20 medicine. So if we get scarier, there's enough to cure a good few people with that. But given how often we get manhunter packs... I'd rather not risk it, actually. Thank you. And as soon as one house is built, we've got, potentially, a new person. A stellar pirate named Zhao er has arrived and wants to join the colony. Um, I mean, I suppose so. Got to think of that hospitality after all. Fine. Fine. You know what? The more people, the better. Hello. Oh, my God. You look quite suitable for the colony. What are you good at, my friend? Crafting. We like to see crafting. World weary. Look at that. You're bored of being a pirate. You just want to settle down in some nice frontier town. Architect. I like that a lot. Stone construction speed up 200%. Smoothing speed and construction success chance. But you're crap at construction. Maybe I turn you into the carpenter? Because somebody did suggest, and this is such a cool idea, a carpenter mod. I think it's under the production tab here. We should have a carpenter table. Yeah, which allows you to make uh, effectively flat-packed furniture, right? So we can make the tables and the beds. We keep it in storage. And we install it when we get new people and, and put that out there. Maybe that works for you? Alternatively, we do need a tailor, and you are qualified at that. Medical 4, big boned. I don't think anything else really lends you to it. Yeah, you could be a tailor. Pirates, trust me, pirates know one or two things about big old hats. As if the stars themselves have aligned. I have such a good name for my new person. Who's leaving behind that pirate lifestyle, leaving behind their pirate name? Dordy Tweed. 
Tell me that isn't a fantastic name for a tailor. You know what? I'm committing to that idea. Congratulations. You are now on hat making duty, my friend. Try and help keep things a little bit more in order. Oh my god, you've immediately taken over. To try and keep things a little bit more in order, I have also been changing their job titles too. So obviously, Dordy Tweed is a tailor. Sheriff Flaps is, well, a sheriff. Fluffy Pops being the preacher. And what better archetype of character is there to know about hats and boots than a pirate? And what do you mean he's probably a traitor about to turn hostile on your people? Well, that's a fair point. Maybe we should... Maybe we should have a, a colony policy, given that we've had two traitors now, that any new people turn up have to drop the firearms until they're properly properly settled into the colony. I think that's a good idea. Oh, hold on. Instead of uh, doing that thing I talked about earlier and letting the uh, letting like Dr. Marjo go into houses to help people if they fall down or whatever, why don't we just allow drafted colonists? Because, I mean, if there's a shootout in the middle of the street, Dordy Tweed saying, no, 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 you can't come through my tailor shop. That doesn't make any bloody sense. Oh, there is a way to do a whitelist. Oh, well, that would have been a lot easier, for God's sake. Turns out you have to t tick the uh, colonist inverted filter. That flips it over to a whitelist rather than a blacklist. So then you just say who is allowed in rather than who isn't. That makes a lot more sense. Thank you. That's such a good idea. Right, let's copy that over. Um, I'm going to paste that onto your private bathroom because we're a quite a luxurious place to be. And then we'll slap it on the actual tailor shop itself. So anybody can come into the... Anyone can come into the shop, but you're not allowed into the back rooms. I think that makes sense. And what we'll do is we'll set up the... Uh, bear in mind, we've got our assigned shopping areas and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and make a new area called shopping. That way, next time we get guests from the Empire or whatever, uh, presuming nobody else in the colony wants one, they can buy themselves a cowboy hat. They have to pay for it. Our civilians obviously don't have to. Actually, we should probably designate like this area as a shopping area. Um, where else would I want them to shop in the place we've got now? I, I suppose I can let them buy meals. That's fine. Really, we need to set the bar up and maybe the liquor room as a shopping area. That way, when they turn up, they can buy alcohol from the saloon. Oh, now, lots of people did say that the saloon needs, like, poker tables and ways for them to fight in there a bit more. I like the idea. I'm thinking we actually build a second saloon stay on the edge of town. Somewhere where we can have that dingy poker room through, like, a curtain and then... Uh, there's that one board game, isn't there, added by Vanilla Expanded Vikings that makes people three times more likely to break out into a social fight. Uh, if I can find it, I'll let you know. Recreation, there we are. I thought this was alphabetical. Why has it gone back to normal? Yeah, constantly being gaslit. Uh, yeah, this one here. Now, that brings me on to the next thing I want to do today. Many people pointed this out. Uh, obviously, we need a railway, right? I think having that run through the desert section would work pretty well. And, and to be honest, it's a lot of steel. It's quite expensive for what is... Very much a vanity project again. And obviously, we want the road running out of town to go over the top of the rail so that we can have some fancy high-speed chases. Should we do it just straight across like that? Just completely parallel to town. I actually kind of like that. Yeah, no, that's good. This is an old-timey rail, so we're going to have to throw down some of these some of these sleepers, too. Is it expensive? Ah, not really. I can, I can afford to justify, what, like 500 wood for... Exactly 500 wood for decoration. Oh, that's going to look so cool. Sell items to customers. Oh, shit. There's actually a specific job type for that. Oh, well, that's 10 out of 10. Yeah, happy to do that. I mean, it needs to be put on entertaining, I think, for when people go to the saloon. Man, there's so much logistics associated with running a western town. Who could have predicted that? I think I just want the new guy on tailoring and crafting, right? There you go, Dordy Tweed. Live your best life, my friend. Maybe swap that hat, because you're not going to get many customers if they think that's your best work. Do you imagine if we're able to turn this town around to the event, we can get everybody wearing, like, a, like a very fancy top hat and Victorians, ladies' clothes and nice feathery, fancy boaters and things like that, rather than just cowboy hats? That's a long time coming. We're getting a lot of development. For the time now, though, I'm just going to get them to wear more appropriate clothing than a fucking cat hat with ears. Why do you need a toque in the desert? Oh shit, there's a mad camel. Where's my sheriff? Sheriff, what are you doing? We've got a mad camel. Sheriff is armed with double flintlocks. <laughs> Look at the reload time. Maybe this is a... Oh! Damn. You gotta admit though, when he hits, he hits, huh? Maybe I should give the sheriff the better guns. Because right now, uh, Dunn, who is currently... Oh, man, I didn't even swap the roles over. Let's fix that right now. I said I was going to, and I completely forgot. So we can make Dunn either the head rancher or the homesteader. Now, look, the, the homesteader gives plant work speed, plant harvest deal. That would be nice. The plant harvest deal would give us a lot of extra stuff, lots of extra cash for the town. But the head rancher gives tame animal chance up by 200%. That could be the difference between life or death. Because if you try to tame a horse and the horse says no and kicks you in the head, you're in a lot of trouble. I think in terms of safety, 
We make him the rancher. He can still work the fields. He can still plant some plants occasionally. But his main job is going to be dealing with the animals. And I'm fine with that. So Dr. Marjo, we want to be the barber surgeon. That gives 50% extra to 10 quality. 50% extra to operation speed. 50% to success chance. And then it also gives a thought tended by barber surgeon. Telling you I wasted a whole episode building this church. We are getting some good use out of this damn thing. Flaps, you get to be... The sheriff, my friend. And this is going to make a massive difference to Colony Mooks. They're upset they don't have a preacher, a barkeeper, a goods merchant, and everything else. Fluffy Pops gets to be the preacher. Obviously can help out with conversions, that type of thing. That's going to speed up some brand new people into the colony. Ah, maybe I should make Emmy the barkeep. I feel like that suits her a lot better. What does being barkeep actually do for you? Hang on. Uh, it gives you the ability to throw party. I mean, I want her to retire to be the saloon manager, but I don't think she's going to retire quite yet. Ah, okay. Okay, leave it for now, I think. Frog. Frog needs to be converted. I've only just realized he's still Imperial. Oh, shit. Okay, well, that's... Eventually, of course, he's going to be the town blacksmith. Oh, shit. Frog and Emmy have been working on the rail line. Whoa. They got way more done than I thought. Damn, that looks good, though. I haven't got any steel to put down the actual rails. <laughs> and what have we got? We got, like, uh... Do any of these look kind of era appropriate? Not really. Let's go for these hand cars. We need, like, a, an old steam locomotive or something like that. Flat car? Oh, that could look fine. There's trader available, but I don't know if I believe them. All right, well, let's give it a go then. Hello? Don, I need you to come and have a... You got 39 swan eggs that you just don't want to trade. <laughs> you don't sound like much of a trader to me there, fella. Dolores has a uh, delicious tea. I think I'm all right. I think I'm all right, actually. I need copious amounts of steel for my decorative railway. Now, I thought if I throw down some recreation in here, even though, again, I want the more sleazy, uh, out-of-town saloon to kind of be dealing with this stuff, I thought it would at least encourage them all to go in there a lot more frequently to make the saloon feel a bit more alive. I'll stroke my beard and call me a cat boy. Dorty Tweed turned out to be a traitor. Who could have guessed that, huh? Man, what a terrible shocker. Now, I think we could. Look, we absolutely could draft everybody up. Send them all in. Or I can leave it to the sheriff. <gasps> we can get him through the window. Get him, Sheriff Flaps. Stand down, Dorty Tweed. Don't make me fire. Oh, God, he's not going to hit anything with that. He's got... He's got flintlocks. <laughs> okay, well, we could be here for a few hours. <laughs> Don't you walk very slowly in the wrong direction? Jesus Christ. Okay, you know what? Don, Marjo, give me your guns. Who's got the best guns? Give those to the sheriff. If I'm going to stick to this idea of only drafting up the person who should be dealing with the damage, Frog. Frog, go around the back. Give him your gun. Who else has got a good gun here? Because, my God, I can't bear to stand and watch him reload for the next four hours. Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. Oh, he's just lit the room on fire that he's locked in. No! Did you shoot him dead? Oh, for fuck's sake. Dordy Tweed! All right, put the fire out, put the fire out. Well, I need to draft people up to firefight now. Which, to be fair, isn't that bad. Isn't that bad an idea? Allow drafted colonists. Oh, there we go. Oh, weird. You have to manually path them through the door. I see. If you try and get them to go around, the, well, then, oh, if you try and get them to go through directly, they will just go around. Oh, for God's sake. Fine. We're naming the next Taylor Dordy Tweed instead. Emmy reached level 80 in construction. Building a whole railway single-handed would probably do that, yeah. God damn Dordy Tweed. Oh, you could have been so good. Sorry. Outfit is in use by Muffalo 2. What? Nudist? <laughs> I was going to make a sheriff-specific outfit so the sheriff had priority for... Sh sheriff? Double R. For... Th sh sheriff? Hey? Sheriff. Double F. Yeah, no, that's got to be it. So the sheriff had priority for things like the bandoliers to make him shoot faster. Right, there we go. Now we've got a sheriff that can actually defend the town. He's got the bandolier. He's got the strongest weapons in the colony. I feel a bit more safe now. And then, of course, for any big threats where we've got to, we, you know, we've got to draft the whole city, turn them into Minutemen, then, yeah, that's fine to give everybody a gun and draft them up. But I think for, for kind of city conflicts, people go berserk, break down, go on a murder spree, whatever, that's when the sheriff has to, has to step in. Oh, my God. Is that 157 Kempfuel? We could run a good chunk of the town on that now. We could get ourselves like a chem fuel powered stove or something for the saloon. Oh, nice. We got some, we got some milk. Obviously, shitloads of muffalo wool, I presume, at this point. Let's get that moved over into the tailor shop. Not that we've got a tailor anymore, of course. Oh, here's a new problem. If I do it like this, haulers can't take them their resources. So, I guess what we'll do is we'll just lock the houses off. The back rooms will have to allow for. for anybody to go in, to be honest. There you go, that's a lot better. If we only allow colonists, then. 
They can go in there, but not the guests. And then if these doors were just allow everybody in. So guests can come in here, but not in the back rooms. Colonists can go in the back rooms, but not their private houses. We still can't build a bloody chem fuel stove because I haven't got any steel. How did the frontiersman do it? It's a bloody nightmare. We, we could set up eventually an outpost over here in, uh, in the mountains to send back steel to the town. Because I really just don't know any other way around it. What are you talking about? Think, hippies, think. If you give me components, I'm just going to industrialize. You fools. Give me some steel for my model railway. <laughs>Sorry, Emmy, do you know that this is all a... Uh, she know this is all a game. This is, all, this is all a simulation. I find myself asking the question all good cowboys ask themselves. How on earth do I feed my velociraptors? Muffalo, speaking of ranching, hello. Milk wool, milk wool, 107, 101. Are you... Uh, it's a male muffalo with 107 balls. We've already got a male muffalo with 108, right? Uh, it was... It was this one. Yeah. Damn, it's an inferior muffalo to the one we've got. I'm not interested. What we need is a high wool yield female muffalo, because our muffalo calf currently, I mean, look at that. 108, but again, it's the calf of the of the muffalo that I'm trying to breed, so I'm not really sure that's allowed. Nor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Empire's worst enemy. Hippies. <laughs> Hang on. If I say always let them come, are they, are they, they going to get into a shootout? I'm going to spray to it to you. I just don't even know how to pass this sentence. Always let them come. Always let them come. Visit to friends. Uh, join me. Be on your best behavior. I guess because the hippies and the, the Empire. Ah, oh, Christ. Oh, God. Gee, no. Oh, a mono sword. Oh, it's bonded. Well, um, that's unfortunate, eh? We got ourselves a sawn off, a plasma saw, <gasps> a poncho. Hello, persona toxblade, guest of the fallen empire. I'm so sorry. Was this person high ranking? Uh, magister. What what rank is that? That's that's quite high, right? Uh, magister is. Oh my god, magister is up there. That's only two ranks behind Stellark. Ah, oh, shit. I'm sorry about the hippies. I feel like we, we've got to rescue you and patch you up and make sure you're getting the finest meals. Oh, God. I mean, we got some weapons out of it, though, to be fair. Marja, where are you going? No, 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 no. I don't even understand. You need to be tending to this person. They're high-ranking Imperial. They need all the help we can get. You know what? Use the best quality medicine. We've got to try and smooth things over. Damn hippies. Oh, my God. More hippies. They're massing at my borders. I guess it's because we're we're ranchers and they're one of the other few kind of farm related factions on the planet, eh? Commissant hippie. Why is it in French? That means trader, by the way. Hello, how you doing? Really don't want anyone. Oh, definitely no Imperials in my hospital. No, no, no. <gasps> oh. Again, we could be stereotypical cowboys in every way with our hats, our ponchos, our our revolvers, and our stallions. Or we go all in on the dinosaurs. Or I mean that works too, yeah. Feed the hippies to the velociraptors. That's a great idea. Oh, fucks. No, I'm not doing this anymore. We're getting one building built a day. And I can't justify it. It's taking too long. So you know what? I'm gonna build a damn cactus ranch or something. Some way to get a reusable amount of wood. You mean flowers can't support building a whole town? This is ridiculous. Where am I gonna throw this? Um, what I was thinking is we expand this out, the, the fence, because we've got a lot of animals and we, we seem to be getting more and more by the second. We expand this out all the way to the edge of the desert, follow it around and bring it to the river again, as we've got it currently set up. So it's got one straight edge. I suppose I, I wanted to build kind of a ranch building above it. But what am I going to put in there, right? Because Dunn's got a home. He's sharing a home with Marjo. I mean, I could give them a... I suppose I could give them like a, a bigger house overall, like a proper farmhouse. We slap down the growing zone, what, like here? Sure, whatever. He can deal with it. He's a, he's a very, very good plants grower. Um, the only concern is that we can only grow fiber corn, which is better than nothing, to be fair. Hungry crows have found my what? Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I left the door open on the on the, on what will be the factory building. So all these bloody vultures and crows have flown in. Oh, for fuck's sake, get out of here. Oh, and I was so careful about not allowing rotten and fresh stuff on shelves that I've actually set up, right? Like these ones. Shit, for God's sake, we've been overrun by vultures. Wait, we've been overrun by vultures. 
<laughs> Looks like it's high noon, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Chasing crows out of the stockpile with with revolvers is amazing. Thank you, Sheriff. Oh, delicious. Mm, meat's back on the menu. Are you finally able to make some kibble now? Oh, well, that problem solved itself, didn't it? I don't have to worry about the Velociraptors. Just leave some meat out, bait the crows over, and we get more meat. I think I've just invented trapping. Oh, we can take that one off the research tree. That one's solved. You know what? I'm going to put the tree back into research tree. Because, my God, I can't spend another episode building a, a, a building at a time. A single, what, like one unfinished building a day. This episode is going to go on for 50 minutes. In the series itself, it's going to go on for three months. We just can't do it anymore. Do you know what? Getting the sheriff to go out there and hunt things is a great idea. Not only will it refine his shooting skill, but it's actually going to put a lot more meat back on the menu. Should have thought about this earlier. You know what? You can hunt those muffalo. And actually, the more animals we hunt, the more animals we'll have to spawn in to, to, to fill their place. So if we have not hunting the relatively safer animals, right? It's a small blue ship chunk. Are you telling me there's a chance that we might be able to... Yeah, like chunk though? Uh, ship? Ship chunk? Nothing. Oh, I just need a stove. I need a bloody stove, not a cooking table, not a meat grinder, just a stove. 26 steel. Damn it, I wish I hadn't wasted all the steel on this fucking railway track. Because I take it apart. Two steel per railway track, and we've got 95 of them. It means we're going to get roughly, what, like 50 steel? How much do I need for this? 80. Oh, for God's sake. It's not urgent. We don't need it. This thing can cook vegetarian meals, right? Which is pretty much all the food we've got anyway. And the meat that we do have is drying on the rack to make delicious cowboy jerky. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. I mean, except for what they're all screaming at one another about. That's not nice. That's kind of horrible. I originally took out simple sidearms because I wanted to focus on everybody having a specific role in the colony. Put a lot of emphasis on having a sharpshooter, a bounty hunter, a sheriff to defend us. While the farmers and the ranchers just did that. But then again... It's the Wild West. Everybody's going to be packing around here. And be uh, allowing, like, Dunn to use farm tools, given that he's already got, like, his hands are full with revolvers. I just feel like it would make sense. The doctor being able to use a scalpel and the crafter being able to use a hammer, it would just be... It just makes too much sense. And shit, you know what's way more important than having having a, a stove that would just let us build a bigger meal variety? Actually having somewhere to craft the guns. We're going to need ourselves a machining table, and then we're probably also going to want a smithy as well. I guess we go for a fueled smithy. Well, a chem fueled smithy would be cool. I presume you can manually load it and don't need a chem fuel network, but we'll try it. Escapas infant here is fully healed. Hello, this is this is the very, very high-ranked Imperial who got mobbed by hippies. He's become a guest, so now we need to take very, very good care of him. Try and entertain, try and create friendships. We might even be able to snipe him if they like him that much. But given that we've already damaged relationships with the Empire because this guy got mugged in the first place and we stole Frog from the Empire, who's the really good crafter, got to be careful. Charmed him. Of course, Emmy charmed him. Oh, God, whole ass sheriff flaps. The sheriff might need a bit of help on this one. That's a lot of muffalo. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. Keep firing. Keep firing. Okay, maybe stop firing. I was kind of hoping he could take the one out in front and then keep running back. I think the sheriff's about to get absolutely flattened. I, I'm playing with fire. Oh, we know from, we're better than this. We know from experience that the, the, the animals on this frontier are the most dangerous thing. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, God. Careful, 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 careful. We've got to get Marjo down there fast to go patch him up. Back off, back off, back off. God, they're so strong. It's like we're using some of the weakest weapons or something. I think there's nothing else for it. Done sending the Velociraptors. <laughs> oh, it's good. Oh, it's so good. How you doing, Flaps? You didn't lose anything, right? Uh oh You lost an arm. Oh, Sheriff Flaps. In a horrible muffalo accident gone wrong, he's been maimed. I'm sorry, I don't think I can do much for prosthetics with that, right? Um arm? If we say shoulder? Nothing. Oh shit. Um that's a real problem. Because prosthetics themselves are... What did I just accidentally click on? Do not euthanize him via cut. Otherwise, I'll never hear the end of it. It'll be the Velociraptor situation all over again. What about, like, simple prosthetics? Simple animal prosthetics. I mean, <laughs> maybe it could work. Who am I to say otherwise? Regular prosthetics. Oh, Jesus. It's the only thing... Wait, we only need to research that? Wait, what? What about the theories? We can just jump straight to it. I wonder if it's because there's a lot of uh, early, like, medieval and tr and tribal prosthetics to replace there. I'm not complaining. I'm really not complaining either way. Oh! What are you doing to me? My poor muffalo. That better not be the good muffalo. Oh, it's not. Well, all right. Dr. Marshall, he's got a problem with his muffalo. Obviously, we're going to try and save the damn muffalo. 
very annoying. I hate ranching. <laughs> it's so much effort. You gotta worry about feeding animals and giving them water. Oh my god, at long last. Thank you. Baby the hobo has grown up. My god, hasn't he just? <laughs> he grown up into a 40-year-old man overnight. And finally, we can respect the frontier lifestyle. At the age of three, the hobo is ready for work. Only, unfortunately, you know, basic haul, cleaning, rearming, maintenance, transport, mortuary. Just the important stuff, like making sure the turrets have enough ammunition and dragging bodies to a crematorium. Yeah, I think I will keep them as a colonist rather than enslaving them or kicking them out, I suppose. Amazing. So now we can actually start educating them. Now, one of the things I did was throw in the back of the church a, a school. Because that just kind of makes sense, right? Now, what I have done... I'm really trying to get a lot of the building done today. I'm sorry. I know that episode, every episode is like 90% building. I'm trying to send it and uh, get everything done. So these are just going to be more generic house shop type buildings. Same as everything else on Main Street. I'm not really sure what to do with them yet. We do have, you know, we do have plenty of stuff that we can throw in there. This room is going to be the sheriff's office. This one up here, moving out from the fort. Because the fort was, again, meant as kind of a temporary thing. Then at the top here, this is going to be the jail cell. And then you got kind of a kind of air gap there too. And a little horse hitching area. Somebody in the comments yesterday did say that a lot of places should have hitching areas, and I think that's a great point. We definitely need to work on that. This, though, with all of its shelves in the back, is gonna be the bank. Thought bank next to the sheriff's office. They'd probably be quite happy with that one. There is still such a long way to go with everything in the city, but you know what? I'm, I'm happy for now to scale back on the building a little bit. Focus more on the characters, get them, like, specialized outfits, get them weaponry and sidearms, I suppose, because I will throw that back in after today. Anything that makes them feel more unique. Because right now, it's just going to be everybody wearing cowboy hats and overalls, which, though, is good. Doesn't really feel right for some of them. The doctor wouldn't have that. The blacksmith needs an apron, and the preacher should have... Like, the outfit for the preacher, I think, is going to be very cool. Oh, shit, our other guest left. I didn't even notice, because we've got two new people that have just turned up. What, did that actually affect faction relations at all? Um, Fallen Empire is back up to plus eight. Nice. Remember, X did the map healthy times two. Had a delightful visit times two plus seventeen. Amazing. So we actually did a good job. Then that's that's reassuring. I'm glad the saloon wasn't a complete disappointment. Sheriff Flaps tried to chat up Emmy. The sheriff and the mayor. That could be a dangerous combination. And actually, you know what? Perfect time to call it. We've got a bedroom for the sheriff. He was the only person without a proper dedicated house. Everyone else has somewhere attached to one of these buildings, whether it's a specialized bed, like for example, uh, the the blacksmith. A specialized bedroom behind the blacksmith's house. In fact, we should probably assign you to that, genius. There you go. I'm, I'm happy with it. Everyone's got a place of their own to live and to work that's on theme and on brand and suitable for what they do. I'm calling it there. We're done with the city building. We're not done with the city building. I'm just going to do it in the background, but it's not going to be the main focus anymore. We've got weapons to get out there and grab. Specifically the, uh, I mean, anything for the uh, law and order weapons we've got. Got to set up some shops and some shopping areas for the guests to turn up. Do a little ranching. I feel like I need to focus a bit more on the ranching aspect of things. I've been trying to hunt animals as much as I've remembered to to get new ones to spawn in to try and get get those muffalo. You know what? It wasn't that action packed, but my god, it does look pretty good. Now imagine these buildings and this type of building spread and, and slow procedural placement. And then imagine that across this whole map. I think it's going to be pretty good. Is it going to be another Dr. Egypt? I'm not sure. It's obviously a lot harder to nail down a, a consistent theme with this one as, as much as it was with Dr. Egypt, but... I think we can get there. And, and unlike that one, there's actually going to be some tech evolution. It's harder to get, but we, we're still allowed it. We can still get it. You know, if we go to a faction base, they got a comms console lying around. We can take that and bring it back. Be harder to maintain and whatever else because we can't make components. But there's always ways around it. So there's definitely places we can evolve out into and go for steam power and shit like that. I think it's going to be pretty good. Thank you for joining me today. As always, a thank you to the executive producer patrons. Apologies if this episode was late. I'm, I'm sure I put up a post uh, or, or something in, uh, somewhere. Um, but as I, I was supposed to have a medical appointment basically in like two months. And then they rang me up like when this episode was supposed to go live a few hours before. Being like, hey, uh, we've got an appointment if you can get down here fast. Because we've just had a cancellation. I was like, absolutely. I'm 100% taking that. So that's why I was totally unprepared. to caught completely out on it. So thank you to an apple in solitude. Jared, Lusk and I, Holy Reapers, Necrophilin, Christian Sheldecker, Vonarath, Nexdar, Mr. Moma, the Aaron W0, Lucky One, Akrana, Fizzlebuns, Commander Crint, Bobism, Sergeant Nero, Ryan Duffy, Dames Ditchell, Griff, Killer, Starling Six, and everyone else over at Patreon. If your name is not on the list again, I can only apologize. I, I've been so busy. Basically non-stop all month. The house is a total dump. I finally got around to building some furniture the other day, so we've actually got somewhere to, like, sit, which is crazy. Um, I'm catching up with things, but it's hard to juggle everything going on at once, so very soon, very soon it'll all be good as new. 
See you all soon. <laughs>